Good day. This is uh, Dr. John Bennett from Miami Beach. We have another episode of Neurosurg Neurosurgery Super Sunday for November 3rd, and we have the pleasure today of having JKBC uh, Parthaban. He's a neurosurgeon from India. He's going to present on cisternostomy and post-traumatic cerebral edema. And yeah. let us first, uh, part, uh, can you get off the screen share, uh, JKC? I'm going to introduce the panelists now. <coughs> oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, you just put, uh, get off screen share there. There you go. Yeah. Okay, good day, Axel. How are you? Could you please introduce yourself? Axel Nomo, can you please introduce yourself? Yes, good morning. Good morning to everybody. I'm Axel Nomo, fifth year medical student from Cameroon. I, I will be happy to throw your presentation. So, good, okay. good afternoon to everybody. Very good, uh, J uh, Axel. Welcome from Cameroon. And Khalif, welcome. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, greetings from Nairobi, Kenya. My name is Khalif. I'm a fourth year resident at Al Khan University Hospital, Nairobi. Mm, that's quite a background he has, too. Uh, Amir, welcome back. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. John and everybody. Uh, my name is Amir Badran. I am from Ukraine. I'm a head of neurosurgical uh, department. Uh, well, welcome, Amir. And Dr. Wow, welcome back. Oh, welcome, welcome, Dr. John. I'm Dr. Weil, a neurosurgeon from Sudan. Uh, hi there. Good afternoon, all. And welcome, Dr. Wall, and our old friend, Dr. Kabulo. Thank you. My, my name is Kabulo from Democratic Republic of Congo. I'm currently final year neurosurgery resident at the University of Zimbabwe. And welcome, Dr. Kabulo. Natalie, are you there? We can't hear you, Natalie. Can't hear. Whoop. Okay, that's okay, Nathalie. That's okay. Uh, uh, Nathalie is a general practitioner from Cameroon. She's an active participant, and we're glad to see her. Ibrahim, uh, are you there? Yes, hello, everyone. This is Ibrahim, medical student, PhD student, fifth year in Berlin, Germany. Okay, welcome back, Ibrahim. Uh, Parth Jossi, we haven't met you yet. Parth, are you there? Go ahead, Parth. Okay. Uh, Go ahead, please introduce yourself. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I'm not able to get the video actually. Uh, that's that's okay, just... we'll work on that. Could you please introduce uh, yourself? Yeah, I'm a DNB neurosurgery resident. Uh, just uh, finished my second year, currently uh, in a third year uh, from Hyderabad, uh, India. Okay, welcome. And Bala, are you there, please? Are you? Can you please introduce yourself? I'd, Bala, are you there? There you are, Parth. The video is working. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, Dr. Shinius, are you there? Mm, perhaps not. Segar, are you there, please? If you can. Well, they may have stepped away. Okay, uh, there's Ipe. Ipe, how you doing, Ipe? Please introduce hey. yourself. Hi. Hey. Hi, I'm um, Dr. Ipe. Uh, good to see you all. Nice, nice meeting you. Okay, hey, okay. Party. good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, welcome. Good we, have a, we have a diverse group here, right? Okay, uh, JKC, it's all yours and welcome. Could you please say a few words about yourself uh, before you start your presentation, please? Oh, yeah. Thank you, uh, friends. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Parthiban, uh, Juti Parthiban from India. <laughs> Uh, I practice in Kobe Medical Center in Coimbatore. Yeah. I also get involved in the Neurological Society of India and also a member of a WFNS Spine Committee. And a very good friend of uh, Ayub Chirin. And now uh, we are uh, one of the groups, largest groups that are uh, working on uh, cystinostomy. It's a very proud moment to be with all of you. Um, and it's a wonderful day. Uh, it's a nice evening here in India. I hope that it must be a different time in other parts of the world. But it is nice to see you all. And I have to thank John uh, for getting everything done for all of us. Thank you, John. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, can you start your presentation, please? Sure, thank you. Yeah. 
Are you able to see see my presentation? Not yet. Not yet. No. Not yet. Hmm. You'll get it. You did it before. One second. No, but I'm glad. Okay. Now we can see. Okay. You. You can see that. Yeah. You just need to open your PowerPoint. There you go. Open it up. Okay. Right. There we. There we go. Okay. Now. Uh, but I, I, I see all of you guys on my left side. It is on my, my, my vision, my view. How can I reduce that? No, it's fine. It's fine now. It's fine. We're seeing it's okay. it. Yeah, but yeah I, we're, see, we're seeing the big screen. It's fine. I have it. I have it on my screen. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I have it on my, how can I? No, it's fine. It's, you can see the presentation. Well, we can see it. It's fine. It's big. Okay. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> but well, I, I see a little bit uh, obstructed on my side. Oh, what, all you see is what you, what do you see? I, I see uh, well, five panelists, including you on my left side. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, John, I think he needs to minimize the, the, the boxes that show the participants. Yeah, I, I, you, you I, I, put your cursor on top of it, and then they, yeah, there's a I'm way trying. you can minimize it. I'm trying, but I'm top. not able to. At the top of it, or exit full screen first. Okay, right. It's okay now. No, no, we're we're not seeing it. Oh, it's now. okay now. We we saw it before. You okay? We see now, it fine. We see it fine. Uh, no, no, you're seeing my. I'm okay now. Um, yeah. Okay. Are you seeing my uh, slides? Yeah, I'm seeing cystinostomy and post-traumatic cerebral edema, big slide. Yeah, the, thank you very much. Um, it's a wonderful topic and a topic which we all love to talk about. Um, cystinostomy in, in, in post-traumatic cerebral edema is catching up in our country. Uh, thanks to IPE for the first introduction over this subject. Now, I come from this part of the country, India, it's a southern uh, part of India, Tamil Nadu. I work in this hospital, this Kovi Medical Center Hospital. It's a very large hospital with 850 beds, and it has about uh, uh, more than 50 beds for neurosurgery. And uh, it's a big trauma center too. Now, uh, when we started on uh, cystinostomy, uh, I get this uh, very frequently asked some questions. Everyone asks me. What is basal cystinostomy? Why in head injury patients we do that? How it works? Is it possible? Or is it better than the established method in cerebral edema? Or can it be done as an individual procedure for cerebral edema? So this is the, these kind of questions we keep getting it. Uh, when we start presenting on this particular subject, this is how we get, these are the questions uh, routinely we get. But let me see how we can answer this at the end of the, uh, my talk. Now, this is the basic slide which shows that uh, cerebral edema, and this is how we are being taught, the cytotoxic edema. The other one is the extracellular space edema. Uh, it's a very common thing which uh, we all have read about it. Uh, however, it's becoming a big challenge to treat uh, a massive, uh, very severe cerebral edema because uh, of the challenges we face for each and every patient, like medical management, then we rely on much on the ventilation and then the surgical procedures. So the surgical procedure comes after the medical management and ventilation and, uh, and so on and so forth. When you see the surgical uh, techniques, now, we all know that the basic surgical technique is just supposed to remove the hematomas, the contusions, whichever we find it, which gives more edema to these patients, like extradurals, subdurals, ICH, hemorrhagic contusions. The decompression of the concerned edema to cerebral and cerebral hemispheres should be wide and large. That's what being done for years and years together, like decompressive craniectomy, and then you open the dura. Now, this is how the treatment is being followed and being taught to us, and we are, we are using that for every other day. But at the same time, we also have to think about something called 
the series of release procedures. As we know, as we know that the CSO can be released in, in many ways, like you can open the sulcal surfaces of the subarachnoid openings, you open the small, small uh, sulci, and then you get a lot of CSO coming, seeping and oozing out. But this is not very common in all cases. And similarly, you can also try to open the sylvian system. <clears throat> but if you see the sylvian system at the sulci opening, it's very, very difficult when there's a severe edema. Then comes the cystinostomy, the, 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 the classical cystinostomy. It's called as basal cystinostomy. The reason for that is, is those systems on the surface, we are not able to open. So we have to go to the base to open the systems to let out the CSO. The other thing is the external ventricle drain, that when the ventricles are dilated with a locked up CSO. All these procedures above are not new. They are being done earlier, but without knowing what is being happening. So in the process of this 100 years of education, the hypothesis is that the CSO is always produced in the ventricle. And drain, as you see in this, uh, my, my, my slides, it drains through the ventricle, it comes out of the third ventricle, the fourth ventricle, and then circulates over the subarachnoid spaces. You can see the amount of CSO which goes around the brain, under the brain, and over the brain, and then get drained the, through the villa in, into, into the sinuses. So this is the classical hypothesis. This is the hydrodynamics of the CSO which we have been taught so far. However, the studies have shown that much more things are happening in, in other places, like the systems are connected to, finally connected to the Virko Robin space, from where there is a perivascular subarachnoid spaces. These are the perivascular subarachnoid spaces. These fluids, they dissipated into the white matter. Now, uh, this is how the CSF is considered and understood to be produced everywhere. So why this is important, how this is important. And this is called the, the new working hypothesis. We call it as a glymphatic pathway. Now you can see very nicely from one side to another side, the CSF, the flows, it flows to one side to another slice and then dry out. Now this is the common, common systems and commonly what happens in the lymphatic pathway is that there is some sort of a transparenchymal fluid, tra uh, parent, uh, tra uh, transparenchymal fluid traversing from these uh, perivascular spaces into the uh, white matter and then later on it gets drained out. So uh, this is a very interesting aspect. And so in, in head injury, what happened is that this get disturbed. And so the elevated pressure gradient in the systems causes decrease in this glymphatic removal of interstitial fluid, thus causing the shift of the fluids from the systems into the extracellular space at virko robin space. And this is the hypothesis. Now, how do we come to this hypothesis? This hypothesis, so nothing comes out just like a miracle, you know, it all comes with some scientific proof. Now, in these experimental and clinical evidences, which are given in some of the papers, you can see it is being proved beyond doubt that there is a dynamic of the lymphatic system in vivo using two photon microscopy in mice, that the CSO enters the brain along the cortical pile arteries and proceeds to the parent chemo through a facilitated pathway that is namely the VRS, the Victor Robin space. These images which shows of CS of tracer movement on AQP4 knockout mice reveal 65% reduction when this AQP4 is knocked out. You find there's a reduction in CS of, of fluid flux through the parenchyma compared to the wild type control mice. This shows that there is some pathway which, which helps in pushing this fluid into the parenchyma. And when you knock out that, then you find it is not going through. So this is scientific evidence. The other evidence, experimental uh, evidence of the done in Calgary also showed in conclusion, the MRI images and subsequent histopathology examination clearly revealed 
that the shift of the CSO from the cisterns into and around the brain parenchyma, whereas no blood was found to be present in the brain matter. So only the fluid shifts in. So brain matter is brain. You see the, the blood is not coming into the parenchyma, but only the fluid. So that is where the fluid is getting from the subarachnoid spaces, from the basal systems into the parenchyma, and that causes the, the edema. Now you can see this is the drawing which I've done. You can see very well that the systems are there, large systems, the centers, and finally it becomes the Virko Robin space, perivascular spaces. And you find, you can see the very nice, the gyros are very nicely seen. Now what happens if, if the cisterns uh, are filled up with subarachnoid hemorrhage or following a head injury, pressure, the pressure that's being get blocked, the CS of get, get blocked under high pressure and seeps into these cisterns, or reaches the Virko Robin space, through the Virko Robin space, gets into the white matter, in the process creates a cerebral edema. Now, this is the hypothesis, and this hypothesis is, uh, is the rationale for the development of cystinostomy. Now, uh, the subarachnoid space, if you relieve the subarachnoid space, as we do in aneurysm surgeries, these CSF will come back. Now, you can see in some of the images which I've taken, I compare this with the tsunami waves. Now, this is a, a very, very simple. Now, you can see these images which it shows before the wave attacks the, 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 the waves on the, on the left side of your picture, you can see before the waves enter the canal, it enters the backwaters and seeps into the living area. Now, when the waves resist back, the fluids get back and those uh, main lands become dry. Now, this is a very basic principle. So when the waves enter, like here is another uh, view of, you know, these are all uh, satellite views, you can see the backwaters uh, of a sea and the land. When there is a high pressure tides, it gets into the backwater and seeps into the land and then gets back. So it's a classical one, it's a basic one. It is similarly, this is what happening in our uh, head injury also. So this is what I was uh, imagining and I feel uh, this, uh, this sounds very logic in explaining this, this issue. So when the tidal waves recedes back, the pressure into the uh, into the backwaters resists back. This is the rational. This is the rational of cystinostomy, and this cystinostomy, this rational was uh, invented by Ipe, and um, when he was discussing with me, uh, this is the point which he was telling, and there is a scientific proof which we saw in the previous experimental studies. Now, um, when I take back the history of cystinostomy. You can see that in cystinostomy was initially first, it was described by Ipe in 19, I mean 2006 in Nepal. And um, uh, it was a serendipity, you know, because uh, he took it uh, a head injury for an aneurysm surgery, an aneurysm. He opened it and he found that then the brain started relaxing and start thinking. As far as I'm concerned, we have been doing a, a cystinostomy, we have been doing opening the cisterns. When we, when we do the bifrontal craniotomy for, all, for bifrontal contusions, when we release the bifrontal contusions, we open the systems, the brain gets lax, and subsequently we put a facial graft for the anterior cranial base, which uh, every surgeon may have experienced this, but do not know how to hypothesize the reason for the edema. Uh, I, I has thought over that with the serendipity in 2006. Subsequently, it was taken up by uh, some of the important doctors from all over the world, like right? Roy Thomas Daniel. He started doing it in 2015 as regularly. Uh, myself from India, I started doing it from 2016. And Yeo Yong Hong Wang in China in 2017. These are the three people who took it very seriously and started performing cystinostomy and traumatic brain injury regularly and started presenting and publishing as I'm doing it now. Now at present, uh, this is not only stopped with a few neurosurgeons, but it is done more than 40 to 100 neurosurgeons at, at the time when I'm speaking at this lecture. I'm sure that more and more people are doing now so soon. Having understood the basic, the, the pathology and the pathophysiology, understanding, uh, the, because of the better understanding, 
you started doing it. However, however, it is being considered as a very complex surgery. It is being considered as a very complex surgery because it demands surgical skill and microsurgical training. And some people say it is not possible in all cases. And at the same time, it is not feasible practically in all places. Now, um, here uh, it is not possible in all cases. Yes, it may not be possible in some of the cases, but it is possible in all cases. When you start doing it, then you, you know better and better how to do this procedure. I'll show you. Now, this is the basic anatomy. You can see the basal cisterns. Uh, you, the basically, you know, you can see the supratentorial and infratentorial. In the supratentorial, you have the carotid cisterns. You have the carotid and optic. Optic and carotid. This is a very important uh, uh, area that is a common area we enter in. That is the optical carotid cisterns, interoptic cistern, and lateral to the carotid, lateral carotid cisterns. And subsequently from there, uh, you can find this liliquous membrane that divides the supratentorial and infratentorial by two layers very nicely. So if you wanted to open the CSF from the posterior fossa, that is from the infratentorial region, we have to open the liliquous. You can see in this picture very nicely uh, that the liliquous is in blue in color. You can see the diencephalic leaf and there is also one mesencephalic leaf which is a pink in color. And these things divide, divide this into supratentorial and infratentorial compartment of subarachnoid spaces. When and subarachnoid hemorrhage fills up all these places, and it forms the this it forms it forms the 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 hypothesis is true. Now, um, this shows um, a diagrammatic um, representation. The regular uh, neurosurgeons who do the brain surgery for uh, cerebral edema, they do not use microsurgery and very often. So just do the decomposition craniectomy. And it is very difficult for them to reach the basal system. So first, if you wanted to reach the basal system, you must be a microsurgeon. You must use micro microscope in this operative procedure. So cystinostomy is basically a micro neurosurgery in trauma surgery. So that we have to understand first. And you cannot attempt it on the naked eye surgery. So that is the basics of, 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 of all this thing here. Now this picture shows very beautiful anatomy of the, the basal systems. You can see the uh, optic nerve and the carotid. And between the optic and carotid, you can see the arrows which are showing the liliquous membrane. The liliquous membrane, uh, as you see on the left side corner, down corner, is so very, very thin. And you can see through, you can open very nicely. I'll show you in my videos. And uh, on the right side, you see the diagrammatic representation of a very common and popular slides of the liliquous membrane. Now, subsequently, uh, the techniques of the neurosurgeon has to change because if you wanted to uh, go close to the basal systems, then it is better you remove the uh, a good good amount of lesser wing of sphenoid and also anterior process if needed. But majority of the uh, cystinostomy can be done without that. But if you do the lesser wing of sphenoid removal, then you come very closer and you you can you can expose the basal system much much easier. So this is where the contemporary uh, thinkings are going on and this is the difference with many of the neurosurgeons who are debating on this subject is simply talking about how how we can how we can go there is it possible yes it is possible it is a skull base it is a skull base approach so you may have to be, you may have to change a little bit your views on this particular um, surgery now here is the diagrammatic uh, uh, picture you can see here that's it. That is the lesser wing of sphenoid. And once the lesser wing of sphenoid is open, you can see the optical character system very nicely. Now, this is the operative picture. I am showing the operative picture. On the left upper corner is the patient position. On the, on the right upper is that you've done the craniotomy frontal temporoparietal, a large one, as, as you do forever. And you find the lesser wing of sphenoid projecting out. That, that projection is the one which makes many people uh, difficult to reach the base of the skull 
Now, when we when we push the extra durally, and then you drill it out and go as much close to the anti-recrinoid process, and if needed, you can remove the anti-recrinoid. If you have much skills, you can remove that also, and that gives very nice opening. And uh, and uh, as Dr. Ipe says, it is delocking the frontal and the temporal lobes. So this can be done. So you don't need to worry about it. These are not very much uh, difficulty when you do the head injury patients. Unless if you have a very good patient and you have interest in doing much uh, better operation for uh, cerebral edema, then you have to do this. Skull-based surgeons will love to do this. Now, subsequently after opening, you can see all these are microsurgical pictures of the left upper corner. You can see the optic nerve and pirouetted and there is a mild retraction of the posterior frontal lobe. You can see that. And then so on the right upper, you can see the optic nerve is slightly retracted to, to, to expose the liliquist membrane, which is seen mild bluish and gray. And once you open it, that you go into the infratentorial uh, region, you can see the basilar artery. And in that region, if they're evacuating, evacuating enough of CSF from that place, with good amount of saline wash, you can put a drain there. You can put a drain there, keep it in, and leave it out to drain the CSF in the post-operative period. Now, uh, this is my famous picture, which I always put there. Right? When you start doing the surgery as regular and regular, and you start loving that procedure very nicely, you all know about Taj Mahal. When you enter the Taj Mahal, Taj Mahal looks like what we see in the mid center. Now, when you go around the Taj Mahal, it looks different. And similarly, the basal systems look differently in different approaches. So that is very important for the microneurosurgeons to approach the cystinostrum. So uh, if you don't understand this, everyone will keep debating on how it is possible, how, how it is not possible. I'll show you some of the pictures. This is the, uh, this is the picture which uh, I, I appreciated that you can see each pen the frontal approach, the terion approach, and lateral approach. So you see the optic nerve and keratids in a different, in a different fashion. When you see in the different fashion, your idea is it's microsurgical dissection of that region. So every time you see the optic nerve, it will look different from the frontal approach, terion approach, and lateral approach. Like you see here, there's a patient with a frontal uh, hemorrhagic uh, contusion, which has enlarged. And uh, that has been on the right side, you can see the post-operative picture. The frontal contusions are evacuated and the cystinostrum is done. <coughs> Bone flop is replaced in this case. And this patient has improved from GCS7 to GCS10 and has been discharged. Now, um, this is my uh, uh, video. Uh, you all may have seen it, but I would like all of you to see it again. This frontal contusion is removed. The frontal contusions are removed. The moment we remove the frontal condition, we get a space, and that's the optic nerve. The optic nerve must be gently handled, and you can see the arachnoid. So you can see that you can peel out gently. This is medial to the optic nerve, interoptic systems. You open it very gently. You have to keep on putting the saline, and you can use a blunt scissors, micro scissors, to open the arachnoid gently. That is the pituitary stalk. That's a pituitary stalk. You can gently peel it out, and meantime, you can see the CSF slowly gushing out. The CSF keep on coming. Uh, you should be very patient. Now uh, I'm going on the lateral side. You can see on the lateral side, arachnoid is gently peeled out. Basically, it is a microsurgical procedure. The arachnoid is very nicely peeled out. And now we can see the carotid artery. Yes, yeah, you dissect it very nicely. Now again, you can see between the carotids and the optic nerve, you find the liliquist membrane. And this liliquist membrane must be opened gently and you can get into the infratentorial compartment. Probably you can see one of the posterior circulation vessels. Here we can see the basal energy. So saline wash should be given very nicely. The further you can dissect, further you can, because liliquist has got 
it's, it's a much food and you know you have so much of food and of this vessel so a, a good digestion a good liberal digestion you not limit it once you start doing it regularly and good wash you find you find you find the complete cs start coming out so uh, uh, here in uh, head injury patients you not only uh, do a good surgery and also you can enjoy microsurgery uh, that's very important for young neurosurgeons i would like to say so everyone should become a micro neurosurgeon very from the beginning the training is important like uh, you know the basic training is microsurgery for all neurosurgeons now we have to use that microsurgery in trauma now you can see that the more you dissect the more space we get at the basal now you can see the opposite optic now you see the chiasm the brain is so much lax so this is uh, another patient you can see this patient here right frontal contusion and after surgery the brain is much lax in this case uh, yeah these are the pictures which you can see the microsurgery pictures uh, the edematous brain and then this is a tyrian approach you can see the frontal side like we can you can you can see that the the upper right upper corner you can see the directions you can see the optic nerve is slightly look different from what we saw in the previous picture now you can see very nicely the chiasm there the complete apparatus optic apparatus on the on the bigger you can see the chiasm the optic nerves and lateral to the carotid you can see the lilicus membrane and this lilicus membrane can be open and the drain can be placed so the moment you change from the frontal to the tyrian approach the optic nerve and the chiasms look different but your basic technique must be the same meticulous dissection with lot of copious line irrigation with let out the cso come out now another case with the temporal hemorrhage a subdural hematoma massive edema this is approach to the lateral approach uh, this is a post operative picture on the right side very nice relaxed brain you can see that and you can also see the uh, you can also see the uh, drain in front of the pons there you can see the drain coming on the right side of the ct scans and see the drain which is coming out now this is the uh, operative technique on the lateral side now you can see that the maxilla that is the the zygomatic that is the arch is always kept very high and this is very important many times i watch these trauma surgeons they just keep the patient just like that and then do a large dc but here in all my patients are done as if that we do for aneurysm surgery now because you know we need to go to uh, approach and reach the basal system so the brain has to fall back this is an important technical point so i i use it regularly and which very much easy that these are the points which will definitely answer the questions whether uh, this particular basis is not to can be done or can we approach the optical chiasmatic uh, optical carotid systems at all now this is uh, the another case you can see so many cases i can show you so many cases i can show you you can see the right on the lower corner right on the lower corner where you can see the optical carotid left side and there is a drain there's a beautiful drain you know, all this thing is done there is no retractor you have to watch these pictures i don't use any retractor here you can see my left hand the suction is there the suction is enough with a cotton oil and that is uh, taken as a retractor with corp copious amount of saline on push down now that is the video you can see here you can see here you can this is drain this is the drain i am opening the drain now you can see that right next slide yeah uh, i like to show you this bit this is another video why the reason of showing uh, all of you or the young doctors to so many videos this is slightly speeded up it's normal it's not a normal speed it's double speed but you can see the technique how i do the optic now and lateral to the optic now this must be completely gentle there is no retractor again i'm telling you i don't use the retractor i use one day the suction as my retractor many people get surprised how do you do that it is it is very possible because the ventilation gives me a much relaxed brain but at the same time my technique makes me possible once i start reducing once I start releasing the cs of 
then and there, and slowly, slowly, the brain relaxes itself. It allows it, that is the A1 you see. Now you can see this is an interoptic inter, uh, inter -optic region. Uh, I open every, most of the, most of the uh, uh, basal systems in, in the anterior leaf. I try to open as much as arachnoid as possible. With copious amount of saline, with copious amount of saline, you can see that. The reason for showing the, uh, in the large number of slides and I mean the videos is so that the surgeons will understand, yes, it is possible. Yes, it is possible. There's no question that whether it is impossible, I cannot retract, no. Majority, I have feeling that majority of these patients, it is possible. And, and, and uh, in most of the patients, I have taken the lesser being a sphenoid. Uh, anterior clinoidectomy is needed when in very, very difficult situation. If you can't, then I'll definitely do anterior clinoidectomy. Now you can see that post, how nicely, how much the brain is relaxed. Very much relaxed. You can see that that's a drain and it's very much a relaxed brain here after the decompression. This is another video. You can have a little bit. Look at that. There's a here. Now I use the retractor. You can see this is the retractor. I use a little bit. Then subsequently we we completely remove it. Now again you can see the yeah. After that I remove the retractor again. My uh, suction comes optic nerve carotids. So you keep on doing it. You become a master when you keep on doing the technique day and day out. Uh, one case. Imagine imagine uh, I was wondering about. IP has done thousand cases. Uh, so it becomes like a, it's a child's play. Now, if you have not done a single case, then you'll find it is not possible. But if you keep doing, if you keep doing these cases, one by one, one by every other case, it becomes like a child's play. So uh, the masters, they do it very, very, very easily. Uh, see the amount of CS of being gushed, saline wash. Now, now it, that is the liliquis. You can see the layers, liliquis. You can open any technique you like. You can use your micro instruments, micro scissors, or, uh, or a very sharp instrument. So you have to be very gentle. Your microsurgical technique should be very clear. Finally, that is my point. Your technique should be very, very gentle. It is a microsurgery. It's a skull-based surgery. No need to get worried about it. No need to get uh, scared that oh, I'm not able to do. It is possible. You just have to wait. Now you see again, there is no retractor. So only the suction will be there. And the amount, amount of retraction I get is amazing. Amazing, you can see that. You can, this is to demonstrate to all the young doctors that I give confidence that yes, this procedure is possible. So this is between the optic nerve and the carotids. Again, I'm opening a much opening, then I'll put one drain over there for, for, the, for, for the CSF. Yeah, that is the place. I put the drain there gently, yeah, and keep the drain and bring it through outside and then fix it. Now you see these pictures before operation is very, very decompressive craniectomy, cerebral edema, the brain coming out. You just do cystnostomy, the brain gets relaxed and put back the bone flap. It is possible. You can either float it or just put in some uh, uh, a, a bit of a fixation, light fixations to accommodate the, the edematous brain. Now, this is uh, another case. You can see the pre cystnostomy On the right corner, you can see the post cystnostomy The relaxed brain is in comparison. Now, uh, many people ask me, what, how will you keep the, your, um, the drain post-operatively? I keep it down and allow as much as well, CSF to come down per day, 120, 150 cc's. We get it, we are very happy. If, if the drain sometimes get obstructed, you have to just have to flush it out with one cc of saline and that again, you can start um, getting enough of CSO. Now, in some cases, in spite of all this, is, we do get this type of patients. And if you get this type of patients, we are sure you understand that the edema, the primary edema is very, very bad. You can see on the right lower corner, even though I have done cystnostomy, in this case, I have done cystnostomy, there is a CSO coming. But this CSO will be very thick, mixed with a lot of blood. And usually these type of patients, they don't do very well. This is a very rare kind. And you try this type of patients even in acute form. Sometimes we do get this kind of cases. So basal cystinostomy is a microsurgery. 
Opening liliquous membrane drains CSF from infrared into the resistance. It is more than complex. It is essentially a technical issue. It's a technical skill that is needed. It is possible in majority of the head injury patients in most of the cases. Clean audit team is needed in special cases. So you should be trained well. You should be very trained well in skull-based surgery. That is very important, uh, my point. Now, CS of drainage. This is basically, you know, some people used to say, uh, they, they call it in a very, very much, you know, I don't believe this, but I, I personally feel uh, you must understand as a neurosurgeon, it is a CS of drainage procedure of high level with a background hypothesis and what we are trying to tell to everyone. Many people don't are able to not able to understand the concept behind it. And so some people may criticize, but I'm not bothered about it. This technique is seen as complex, but it is not. It is doable. And it is done all over the world in recent years. It is not that. It is so the answers are coming by five years down the line. It's already up five years down the line. It is going to be more and more popular. And my, my, actually, I have a lot of uh, respect to I, uh, if you go through the, um, if you go through the literature, there are so many papers written by him and some of the papers, everyone should read some of the papers. So you can see Clarica paper, you have to read. This paper has to be read and understood by all residents. This is about 30 pages, uh, 30 pages of a very large research review. One has to read about it, then you'll understand why this surgery is being done, why it is being revoked now. And uh, I like to also tell about this, uh, the latest uh, uh, research publication done by our team uh, under the IPE, and this is the very beautiful paper. Uh, you can also refer to this paper, Cystnostomy, a timely intervention in moderate to severe traumatic brain injuries, the rational, the indication and prospects. I'm absolutely, absolutely sure and absolutely sure my talk has given most of the answers and I've come to the answers here. What is basal cystnostomy? If you don't believe it, take it as an old and established procedure, revoked now. Why is this head injury in patients? Because we are letting out the CSF and so the CSF shift edema, that is the reversing the CSF shift, how it works, it reverses the edema which has happened because of the, uh, because of the pressure inside the Virko Robin space. Is it possible? You have seen the videos. Yes, it is possible. Is it better than the established method in cerebral edema? Yes, it is. You will get the results in, 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 in coming, coming years. Can it be done as an individual procedure for cerebral edema? Maybe. Is this possible? We are working on that. We have to select some few cases and we, 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 we are planning on which case we have to do one disease cystnostomy. Uh, completely no, no bone removal at all without doing that completely skull-based approach. Maybe, maybe sometimes it may not be possible in all cases, but it is possible in the majority of the cases. Uh, last year, as, as uh, Khalif was showing that the symposium cystnostomy with the history was first done in Beijing in 2019. It was a great moment. And uh, it was uh, because of the leadership of Ai Cherian and uh, we were very happy to participate in that. And it was a wonderful time. And uh, so naturally, IP is very happy with uh, Yong and uh, myself. Uh, we are very happy to um, give this lecture to all the youngsters uh, in, on, in and around the world. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Parthaban. Excellent. Uh, I guess IP is the most appropriate person to lead this discussion. Uh, IP, can you uh, lead the discussion and introduce your associates before we start? Yeah, uh, Parthi, fantastic. I mean, I, I couldn't have said it any better. I mean, all my lectures over the years, uh, I could, uh, I can say that your lectures are always much better than mine. So, and uh, I see that Wang and Roy is also, their lectures are also much better. I would have uh, done it in my real crazy way and uh, people would have, uh, as usual said, uh, you know, shaken their head and said, this guy is crazy. So, I mean, it's great to have a, uh, people like you uh, doing this. And I see the videos and I see it's how beautifully you're doing it. So I'm very happy.